On today's episode, the Boeing Starliner is back in action. India is landing on the moon and Mars, while the Space Force puts their trust in artificial intelligence. Last week, we saw the triumphant return of NASA astronauts Butch and Sonny to the planet Earth, where they were greeted by a pod of frolicking dolphins and golden sunshine on a pure blue ocean, a storybook ending to the most dramatic astronaut mission we've seen in a long time. Now, with the the two of them home safe, attention has quickly turned to the root cause behind Butch and Sonny's nine-month ordeal, the Boeing Starliner capsule. And as crazy as this sounds, NASA is strongly indicating that they are ready and willing to put Starliner back in action as soon as possible, with another test flight to the ISS potentially coming later this year. No sooner had our astronauts arrived on dry land than NASA commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch began laying out plans for another Starliner test flight, with or without a crew on board. That has yet to be seen. But make no mistake, NASA is sounding very eager to get Starliner into the rotation for moving people to and from the ISS. For a quick reminder on how we got here, when Butch and Sonny first made their approach to the space station back in June of last year, the Starliner experienced two big problems. One was a helium leak, which is not unusual in spaceflight, but it's not good either, because you need helium to keep the fuel system pressurized. Problem number two was a significant failure of Starliner's maneuvering thrusters. Out of 28 reaction control system thrusters on board the capsule, five of them malfunctioned during the high-precision docking maneuver. This issue would have prevented Starliner from successfully reaching the ISS. However, Boeing engineers were able to get four of the problematic thrusters back online to complete the approach. This allowed Butch and Sonny to arrive safely at their destination, but it left a big open-ended question about how reliable the Starliner would be on the return trip. In search of that answer, Boeing and NASA spent weeks running through tests of the Starliner thruster system, both in space and on the ground. What they eventually determined was that the doghouse modules containing the thruster systems were overheating in high-use situations, such as docking, and the excess heat was causing Teflon seals inside the doghouse to expand beyond their expected size, which prevented them from sealing properly, which in turn caused the guidance computer to freak out when the thrusters stopped performing as expected. Even though Boeing was able to narrow down the problem, they lacked any explanation for why the system was overheating or how to prevent the same problem from happening again. And with that knowledge in mind, NASA made the call to return Starliner to Earth without her crew on board. As a result, we ended up with two astronauts stuck in space and no ride home. And now that we finally have them back, NASA wants to do it all over again except good this time. So what exactly are they expecting to change? Earlier this month, on March 8th, Steve Stitch told reporters that NASA and Boeing were making, quote, good progress on the known issues, and had resolved around 70% of the in-flight anomalies from Butch and Sonny's mission. The propulsion system problems, however, were still being studied, with more testing still planned. When briefing the press on March 18th, Stitch reiterated that work was ongoing, telling reporters, quote, We're certainly looking at Starliner very carefully. We're in the process of looking at that vehicle, looking at the helium system. He specified that Boeing is working with some candidate seals that would replace the failed items, which sounds like addressing the symptom rather than the root cause. When pressed on the overheating situation, Stitch said, quote, I think we have some changes we need to make to the way we heat those thrusters, the way we fire those thrusters, and then we can test that on the next flight. That next flight he's referring to will be critical for the future of the Starliner capsule and NASA's crew transportation operations. Stitch said that NASA is aiming to complete just one more test flight before putting a full crew on board Starliner. So instead of carrying just two astronauts, we'd bump that up to at least four. Theoretically, Starliner can carry up to seven people at one time. Stitch told the press, quote, So the next flight would really test all the changes we're making to the vehicle, and then the next flight beyond that, we really need to get Boeing into crew rotation. So that's the strategy. 
Stitch seemed to indicate that thruster system testing at Boeing would be ongoing through the summer, so we'd be looking at a revised flight vehicle no earlier than fall 2025. Now, if we're going to try and deduce an answer as to why NASA and Boeing remain so eager to pursue the Starliner, in spite of its many failures, potential danger to human life, and straight-up bad publicity, it's always a good idea to start following the money. In 2024, Boeing reported over half a billion dollars in expenses tied to the Starliner program. This brings their total loss on the vehicle over $2 billion. They began the development process in 2014 with $4.2 billion in funding from NASA, which was supposed to cover the cost of building the capsule and the first six crewed flights. So Boeing needs to reach that Flight 6 milestone before they can even begin to earn back their $2 billion in losses. But you know who's much better at managing money? ISRO, also known as the Indian Space and Research Organization, who've turned a shoestring budget into one of the world's greatest space exploration programs. And they've recently announced two new space missions, both of which involve landing on a celestial body. The first is a lunar lander to follow their successful Chandrayaan-3 mission, and the second is a craft to land on our planetary neighbor, Mars. While we did say that this new lunar lander would follow up Chandrayaan-3, it will actually be slotted in after Chandrayaan-4 on the mission timeline, since Chandrayaan-3 became the first Indian craft to successfully land on the moon, placing them as the fourth nation to do so. The next logical step will be to return samples. We know that Chandrayaan-4 will be the craft to accomplish this. So then what does Chandrayaan-5 have to offer? Well, the details are sparse, but we know this mission, which was approved for funding last week, is planning to carry a new Indian rover to the surface of the moon, larger and more resilient than the six-wheeled vehicle we saw on Chandrayaan-3. The second rover that India is currently proposing will be known as the Mars Lander Mission, or MLM, and plans to make the first Indian landing on the Red Planet. The program has been in the works for nearly 10 years, but it wasn't originally planned as a landing mission. The program began with the Mars Orbiter Mission, or MOM, which was meant to have two iterations, Mangalyan-1 and Mangalyan-2, as they were unofficially named. The first was launched in 2013, with the second being announced the following year. In 2019, however, new information was released indicating that the Mangalyan-2 mission could potentially evolve to include a Martian lander and rover. This was still very much undecided. And then, in early 2024, the mission profile was updated to not only include a lander, but a helicopter, something very similar to NASA's Ingenuity drone, plus a NASA-style sky crane for use in the descent period of the Mars landing. The launch date was also pushed to 2031, as opposed to the original 2026, but that was expected with the major update. A year has gone by and we finally have the final approvals, the first coming in February from the Indian Space Commission and the second coming this past week from the Union Cabinet. This means that ISRO will finally have a Mars landing on the books, where they would again have the chance to become the fourth nation to reach the surface of the Red Planet. The US Space Force has released a new strategy for integrating artificial intelligence into its military operations and improving AI literacy among Space Force personnel. The new plan says that AI will equip our guardians with cutting-edge technologies and drive innovations. If you're not familiar with Space Force, that's what they call their members, guardians. Now, integrating artificial intelligence with space weapons might sound a little sketchy, but this actually mirrors a lot of what was said by outgoing Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall back in January. Having overseen both the Space Force and Air Force since 2021, Kendall emphasized that future conflicts will operate at machine speed, not human speed, requiring extensive integration of artificial intelligence for real-time data analysis and intelligence generation. He said, quote, The future of war is highly automated, highly autonomous. The ability of the entire joint force to project power depends upon our success in space. And that is further exemplified by a very recent report that the Chinese
Chinese have begun practicing dogfights with their satellite network. The Space Force observed five different objects in space maneuvering in and out around each other in synchronicity and in control. The Vice Chief of Space Operations told the Defense Conference in Arlington, Virginia, that's what we call dogfighting in space. They are practicing tactics, techniques, and procedures to do on-orbit space operations from one satellite to another. The Vice Chief also talked about space-based capabilities developed by both China and Russia, including jammers to disrupt satellite signals, with the ability to dazzle intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance satellites with lasers, as well as maneuvers involving grappling with a satellite and towing it to a different orbit. He also told the conference, quote, This is the most complex and challenging strategic environment that we have seen in a long time, if not ever adding that the force needs capabilities to deter and, if necessary, defeat aggression to guarantee that the advantage is in our favor into the future.